This program is underwritten by the generous support of Stored Tech. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. The firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Store Tech, your technology, our passion. All right, I'd like to call uh, tonight's uh, regular town board meeting. It's Queensbury Town Board. It's May 1st, 2017, 7 01 p.m. And would you all please uh, rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you. We have no public hearings tonight. We have 10 resolutions, uh, so I'll do the usual. I'll go through and explain the 10 resolutions and then give the public an opportunity to ask questions or to offer comments. And, um, and then this board will deal with the resolutions in some form or manner. Now, if you have another town topic that you wish to share with the town board, and it doesn't deal directly with the resolutions, I'll give you an opportunity to do that at the end of the meeting. But for this segment of the meeting, it's just for uh, the 10 resolutions. So Caroline, the first one. 2.1, resolution to amend 2017 <laughs> budget. All right, uh, we're, we need to amend the budget ship some funds and wastewater fund 32 but that fund is related to the wastewater and water fund 40 which is a fund related to water there was a software glitch uh, that happened to the wastewater and water social security budget for 2017 uh, they caught the uh, mistake and this is an amendment to rectify this and the budget officer had uh, made this aware to the town board earlier this year that this was coming. So it's just to um, correct a mistake. Yeah, social security. All right, so appropriation is for social security in both cases, even though the second one says society security, it means social security. Okay, understood? Resolution 2.2. .2. Resolution authorizing hiring of Michael Brunel as temporary seasonal laborer to work at town cemeteries. All right, it's getting the season, plus Mike Brunel's father's out, uh, so they really need some work. Um, Michael Brunel is related to uh, one of our workers at the cemetery, uh, and that has to be brought to your attention. Uh, however, he's going to be hired as a temporary seasonal laborer to work for the cemetery department uh, for up to 24 weeks he can work. He gets paid $11 an hour. And so that's 2.2. 2.3. Resolution authorizing hiring of Richard Roth. Rothke as temporary seasonal laborer to work at town cemeteries. And again, Mr. Rothke is going to be temporary seasonal laborer to work for the cemetery department starting on or about May 15th. Uh, maximum he can work is up to 24 weeks, and he also has to go through pre-employment physical and background checks as reasonably necessary to judge fitness for the duties for which he's being hired, including drug and alcohol screenings. He also will get paid $11 an hour. Resolution 2.4. Resolution authorizing hiring of seasonal employees to work for Department of Parks and Recreation. Okay. Emily Lovering, Evan Lovering, Ryan Plansford, Joey O'Shaughnessy, uh, 
they're proposing to work part time for um, the Department of Parks and Recreation. And there are familiar relationships that I have to make you aware of. Emily and Evan Lovering are the children of Park and Recreation Director Steve Lovering. Ryan Plansberg is the son of Park and Recreation Mechanic James Plansberg. Joe O'Shaughnessy is the husband of Park and Recreation Assistant Director, Lori O'Shaughnessy. They would work on a part-time seasonal basis, effective May 2nd, and to be paid at the appropriate hourly wage to prove for seasonal recreation positions subject to town successfully completing background checks as reasonably may be necessary to judge fitness for the duties for which they're hired and drug and alcohol screening. Resolution 2.5. Resolution authorizing acceptance of $1,750 donation from Northern United Soccer Club to Line Soccer Fields at Ridge Jenkinsville Park. All right, this town board has to accept donations. Northern United Soccer Club has offered to donate $1,750 to the Town of Queensbury Parks and Recreation Department towards the cost to line the soccer fields at the Ridge Jenkinsville Park. Resolution 2.6. Resolution authorizing community service agreements. Okay, this authorizes, we went through these uh, at a workshop. American Leeds Post 300, Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Southern Adirondacks 1000, Boston Brass Proposal 500, Council for Prevention and Youth Port Program 6000, Family YMCA of the Glens Falls area 6000, Glens Falls Area Youth Center, 12,000. Global War on Terror Monument, 1,000. Mountainside Free Library, 1,000. Queensbury Little League, 11,000. And Shop with a Cop, $785. Resolution 2.7. Resolution authorizing agreement between Town of Queensbury and Greater Glens Falls Senior Citizens, Inc. This comes out of our senior fund, and the board agreed to donate $2,000 to the Greater Glensville Senior Citizen. Resolution 2.8. Resolution authorizing local tourism promotion and convention development agreements between town of Queensbury and certain organizations. Okay. Our OCT tax allocations, again, worked out in the workshop. Adirondack Plume Festival, $15,000. Adirondack Theater Festival, $3,000. Adirondack Vet Fest, 2000. Chapman Historical Museum, 8,500. Peter Canal Alliance, 2,500. Saratoga Musical Union, also known as Glens Falls City Band Concerts, 6,230. Glens Falls Collaborative, 1,500. New York Spider Writers, 2,500. New York State Outdoors Writers Association, 2,000. Sister Cities Committees, 1,500. South Warren Snowmobile Club, 1,000. Under the Woods Foundation, the Cherney Gurney Festival, 2,500. Warren County Safe and Quality Cycling Organization, 2,000. Westlands Falls Volunteer Fire Company, or the Freedom Festival, 12,000. <clears throat> West Mountain Ski Center, 7,000. World Awareness Children's Museum, 1,000. Resolution 2.9. Resolution approving audit of bills, warrant of May 2nd, 2007. Okay, so this is a warrant with a run date of April 27th and a payment day of May 7th, 2nd, totaling $804,665.09. All right, those are the 10 resolutions before us tonight. I've got one more. I have one more. one more. Yes. Resolution setting public hearing on proposed local yes. law. Yes, Prohib yes, yes. Prohibiting parking on a portion of the south side of Corinth Road slash County Route 28. Okay. <clears throat> There's been a request, and uh, Tim Brewer has also gone over and taken a look at it and recognized the need for this. Highway Department has gone over and looked at it and recognized the need for this. Uh, no parking signs on, the, on a section of Corinth Road. From the intersection with Big Bay Road, uh, to the uh, western or eastern intersection with Cary Road. 
a total distance of approximately 1,972 feet. So this is setting a public hearing. I'm putting those no parking signs along that stretch I just described, and that public hearing will be here May 15 at 7 p.m. And that's the 10th resolution. Also known Corinth Road, also known as County Route 28. Okay, those are the 10 resolutions before us tonight. Would any member of the public wish to ask questions or offer a thought about any of those resolutions before the board tonight? Yes, sir. John Salvador. Um, resolution 2.8. I can't believe that this resolution got past your workshop session. With respect to West Mountain Ski Center, West Mountain Ski Center is a private undertaking. Article 8 of the state constitution reads, no county, city, town, village, or school district shall give or loan any money or property to or in aid of any individual or private corporation or association or private undertaking or become directly or indirectly the owner of stock in or bonds of any private corporation or association, etc., etc. This is a violation of the state constitution. We're allowed to give money to organizations. You don't give money to anyone, Mr. Strau. That's not your prerogative. I'm not here to debate you. I'm here to make a statement in reference to the statement you made. We are allowed to give money if it's going to produce an event that is going to promote the area in a tourism fashion. That is part of what OCTAX is for. <laughs> No, that's a, that's a poor interpretation of the occupancy tax authority, okay? And if that is, in fact, what it says, then it's a violation of the Constitution. Plain and simple, Mr. Strau. Okay. Excuse me? What's that? How did the OCT tax get through the state to become law then at the county, Joe? Because it was, it was supported by a home rule message from the... From the county. Well, if it's unconstitutional, how could No, you? I didn't say I didn't say the OC tax was unconstitutional. I said what you're doing with the money is unconstitutional. But don't they review our applications and our our donations or net donations, but whatever we give away every year, don't they? Does the state look at that? Is it is it checked upon? I don't know. I'm asking. No, no. No? No. But but to your point, John, if, if we're not able to distribute the money to people that are having events because they're privately owned and they're not a public corporation, how do we get money to those private events? You're supposed to use the money to promote tourism. You promote tourism, not organizations that are going to be direct beneficiaries of the money. If you read the OCTEX uh, laws for the county or the, the, the language of it, it allows for money to be distributed for events that promote tourism yeah. and convention uh, events, those types of things. The, the, Public entities aren't always the ones yeah, that yeah. are doing it. It's that the primary purpose is to promote is to promote. The primary purpose of this money going to West Mountain is to enhance their bottom line. This money this money will certainly be commingled. No, you're wrong. Specifically for an event they're having this winter, I think it's this winter. Yeah, but who's going to benefit from the event? Thank you, John. Who's going to benefit? They have the number of room nights that they've rented. That, that's what we're looking for when we give money out. We want to know what they may have given us a list of how many room nights and how many yeah. people they expect. And All right, thank you. Just, and one other, one other point with respect to West Mountain. West Mountain. Un uh, uh, is in the business of selling participatory sport. You don't pay sales tax on a lift ticket at West Mountain the way you do on a room rental at a hotel. So they're they're not doing anything to it. Thank you, John. <laughs> 
general guideline correct tax. Generally used as of occupancy tax revenue provided to municipalities by the county must be expended for promotion of tourist activities, conventions, trade shows, special events, and other directly related and supported activities. Promotion or promoting is defined as furthering the growth of, establishment of, sales and or contributing to the growth, enlargement or prosperity and or to forward or to encourage or to advance. Therefore, importantly, in order for an expenditure to be eligible under these guidelines, it cannot be just related to tourism, it must be determined to be consistent with previously stated allowed uses and the definition of promotion. So they talk in general about spending on special events, festivals, you can go to flags, business cards, postage, event consultation fees, you can go to recreational activities, you can go to website development, electronic promotions, you can go to brochure production and distribution, <coughs> advertisements, promotions, memberships, and I'm not reading all the subcategories, I just want the public to get the idea that what we're doing is in line with what the county says we can do. Memberships, associations, affiliations, specialized professional services, Educational tourism, <coughs> beautification, audiovisual production, duplication, distribution, miscellaneous promotion, could be mailing lists, okay, we get the idea. Uh, capital <laughs> projects, and so forth. But not when it's conducted by a private corporation. Okay, you're entitled to your opinion. Anybody else wish to speak to any other? I'm Travis Whitehead, Ward 4, and I'd like also to speak about Resolution 2.8. In this case, um, I'd like to uh, talk about the Chapman Museum and the um, $8,500 that's been allocated to that. Um, do I think it's a worthy effort? I think it is. I went there once. It's, it's interesting. Uh, do I think that it's eligible uh, for OCK tax funding? Absolutely not. Um, how many tourists will it attract? I mean, uh, maybe if it's a rainy day, someone will show up there. No one's going to come to town uh, to, to go to the Chapman Museum, I believe. Um, John did just read um, some of the parts of the law, and I think if you reread it, you would find that that does not apply to uh, the Chapman Museum. It's not an event that you're going ahead and a sponsor or anything else. Uh, I'd also like to point out that the $8,500 that you're allocating uh, comes from uh, the hotel people and that they have to sell uh, $212,000 in rooms, $212,500 in rooms have to be rented to come up with that $8,500. Um, I would think that they would hope there'd be a little bit better return for their money. Um, I will read some of the same stuff that John read, and um, actually this comes from the agreement that the county has with the municipalities, the towns, and uh, it was authorized under the laws of 2003 where the legislature actually gave us the taxing authority. And there's only about two sentences in there about the taxing authority uh, that comes from the legislature, and it has nothing to do with brochures and you know the list of things that John started going through. Those were added as examples. Um, you know there are lists of that, but it has nothing to do with the uh, overriding law. Uh, whereas the municipality is ready, willing, and able to provide for promotion of tourist activities, conventions, trade shows, special events and other directly related, directly related and supported activities and possess and can make available all necessary qualified personnel, licenses, facilities and expertise to carry out the terms of this agreement. And whereas the municipality is ready, willing and able to provide promotion of tourist activities, conventions, trade shows, special events and other directly related and supported activities and et cetera. Um, now, we're debating this, and there's an interesting 
paragraph in this uh, 10 page document here that says if you have any doubt about whether a particular event can or cannot be held, that you can go to the OCTAX committee and get a pre approval. Because if it is not approved, you will have to give that money back. The town will have to give that money back. Um, if I can just read that one. Uh, as set forth in paragraph five of this agreement, the municipality may be liable for inel ineligible expenditures. That's the municipality. While the municipality may expend funds provided under this agreement without prior approval of such expenditures by the county, if a municipality has a question as to whether a particular expenditure is eligible or not, they can come to the committee. I would hope that all five of you would table this resolution, take your questions, maybe John's question, maybe Chapman, maybe some others that, you know, and maybe there's ones that are not questioned at all and bring them to them. I don't know why you wouldn't. When you say you give the money back, we give the money back, who would we give the money back? Back to the county, back to the, the county, um, the, the county reimburse, the county reimburses it. So John just handed in a month or so ago a request for last year that asked for 200 some odd thousand dollars back, had a whole listing of things, and he got it. But if someone were to question that there was a $35,000 expenditure to the rec department, for instance, which is one that's been questioned in the past, and that was found by that committee, committee to be not eligible, you would have to return that $35,000 to the county. It would go back into that fund and used by somebody else. And why wouldn't you, on the questionable ones, at least avail yourself of that offer? Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, good evening, Rachel Sieber, Town of Queensbury, Supervisor at Large. I just wanted to also speak to um, your 2.7, or no, I'm sorry, 2.6 resolution regarding occupancy tax. What one? What am I looking at? Point eight. Point eight. Thank you. Oh, I was right the first time. Sorry. At any rate, I want to talk about the occupancy tax. I, I enjoyed very much your workshop last week. I thought that it was incredibly helpful to have the dialogue, um, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be able to also provide input through that process, recognizing I'm not a member of your board. But as a county representative, I did follow up. I hope you all received it, and I apologize I didn't send it on to the attorney's office, hoping maybe uh, one of you have. But there was a scoring sheet that's been developed by the county, and I would just hope that whether you have an opportunity this round or for next year that a scoring sheet is put into place. I know for us at the county level, that's been incredibly helpful. We have our occupancy, um, a small subcommittee look at it first before it comes to the full committee and then before it goes to the full board. So that way we're able to take a look at the impact of the community. And again, we had a brief discussion regarding that occupancy tax calculator and utilizing the CVB with that. Uh, but there is a way to take a look and determine the number of nights and the return on that investment uh, at the occupancy level. So I don't know if that's something you've considered in the past, but hopefully the documents that I provided after the fact, as well as I think you requested to know what the county gave out. And so uh, Councilman Irish, I, I think I sent that to you. You, you got all that, right? Uh, so you have now also a record of every other town. That's public information. I also sent that out to all of you so that you could see how other towns are utilizing their occupancy tax. Uh, but again, for the first time, everybody did it on the same form. So that was very helpful. And we have a good idea of the approximate number of nights. Uh, but I would just urge you to consider a scoring sheet so that it is more consistent and, and fair across the board. I would just hope that I know a few of them, if they didn't file, file an application, you guys, uh, we're going to reach out and ask them to file that application. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing the only ones on this list that are getting dollars are actually those that filed the applications. I, I haven't seen any of the ones that we asked for. There's two of them that we asked for. Who's that? One was the, uh, it was for community development, not tax. It was the okay, so that has nothing to do with this. I think it was a balloon festival. I think didn't file an application, but I know the other ones um, you had put on hold until they filed an application. So, but I think you'll find that scoring sheet to be incredibly helpful. And of course, if we can help at all from the design we have at the county, uh, we'd be happy to. When they, you guys first started this law, didn't the county set 
particular laws up or guidelines that we used and mm-hmm. that's what John read from. Right. But if they wanted everybody to use the same uniform um, chart, shouldn't that come from yeah. the county? It, it, to the towns, yes. all the towns actually. Right. Councilman Brewer, it did come from, from the county in a May 24, I think it was May 2014 resolution, but John sat on that committee as well uh, where they adopted a uniform uh, resolution. And I think the town was notified of it the first year um, for whatever reasons they weren't able to comply. Then this year they were notified again and I know um, subsequently the county attorney's office was able to obtain that. So John John's aware of it. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I'd just like to point out that according to the tourism reports that came out by BGGG, 29% of the uh, of people they interviewed said that they choose their destinations based on historic sites and museums. And in order to stay current and attractive, these uh, historic sites and museums need to keep offering venues and events that are going to be different. It may cost money to change those locations. All right. Um, anybody else like to talk to the town board about any of the resolutions we have before us? Yes, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Mike Wild, Queensbury. I'd also like to talk about the act tax. Um, it is taxpayer money. It, are there any audits that are performed uh, against the money that was spent and provided to these organizations? Uh, case in point, West Mountain says they're going to book so many rooms and have so many visitors come into town. Do we check that at the end of the event or the end of the year? to say these guys qualified and they were able to, do, they did what they said they're gonna do and maybe we'll consider doing it again next year or is it just an open book and an application and away we go? People are staying in hotel rooms and interview everybody in all the hotels and see how many came from the West Mountain event. No, well, but, the Dome, West Mountain, and these organizations, we, we kind of have to have some trust in what they're telling us. Yeah, but wouldn't you think that you would audit that a little bit? Because, you know, maybe when the dome makes something happen or when West Mountain happens, it's not in full season for us. So it's typically off season. So you should see some type of spike in the number of rooms that are booked. If the county was to hire personnel to do that, I would. But isn't that good practice to, you know, think about auditing this to see if it really makes sense? And what you're saying is you don't have the resources to do that, or is it up to the county to do? I, I don't understand, John. Yeah, first of all, we don't have the resources to do that. Two is the county has a lion's share of this money, not the individual towns. So if you think that's a good idea, then you should bring it to the county. But isn't, isn't this board concerned about making sure that the money that's spent is actually showing some type of return? Yes, we are. I am. We have pretty spirited debates about what to fund and what not to fund for that reason. Um, I will say that Doug Miller does probably the most uh, in depth job of collecting data. And if everybody used uh, the policies and practices that he uses, it would be a lot easier to do what we do. Um, and then we verify the data. He, he has all the room nights in the, in the groups and things that are staying and, and things of that nature. But to your point, we've not audited that to ensure that you know these three groups have in fact booked all rooms at the Queensbury Hotel. Um, you know, like, and I'm, I, I understand it's you know an audit is maybe the wrong word, but trust with some kind of verification, right? Does it make sense that they did what they said they were going to do? Help us with that. They are interested in what we're giving the money to. Uh, I know when we had the Queensbury Roundtable uh, up at Dunn's Bay a couple weeks ago, they're very vocal about making sure that money is being spent properly and not just given away, um, you know, willy nilly. And uh, I still have concerns over some of the things that we're doing. Some of the, some of the things that we're funding. So just you know, just a thought, all right? Is this something that the board could kind of give a summary on at the end of the year to say this is how much money we gave to certain organizations and this is what we think the return was, or is that just 
pulling numbers out of the air, politely saying numbers out of the air. Well, we, by then, you'll have some anecdotal evidence from the events that occurred, so you should be able to I think it'd be wise to find some way to verify, at least to, to say next year, should we give West Mountain, case in point, the money again? Well, and we talked about that, that going forward on these applications, you need to prove the past. West Mountain has a ticketing system that you can't buy a ticket unless you provide a zip code. So they'll have all that data for us next year. That's a new system that they use. I, in fact, know that the money that we gave them this year was put towards a race. It was a U14 race. They told us 300 participants would be here for two days. They work. The only reason I know that is because I was at the race. So is that an auditable excuse? No. I was there. I saw it. But, um, you know, if I wasn't there, would we know otherwise? No. But in the future, when they bring these applications to us, we can ask them for information. West Mountain can provide it. Six Flags can provide it. The Dome can provide it. But can the Chapman? Maybe they should have a new policy that says you can't walk in our door without giving us a zip code. And then next year, they can provide it. It's just something, a new process that we need to ask for. If you want this money, this is what you need to give us next year. And if you don't give it, you don't get the money. Yeah, just, some, just some type of information, some type of verification, I think would be very helpful. But thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak to any of the resolutions before us? I, I just like to say, with this application, yeah, can we, get it we um we made up a uh, a new application ourselves, as I recall, and looked at um, the restrictions and, and what we should do. And so we've started to do some things like that. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, we started to do some things like that. But I, I think to your points, it's probably a good idea that we ought to um, somehow get a way to uh, find out how many people are staying here. Maybe. Could get hotels to put down zip codes or you know some of the other uh, yeah but how do you know just because if they put a zip code down how do you know if they came for a particular event or they're just there well, we the different about zip code. We talked about that's that true the they said well, at least the, the folks that were there from the hotel group said that they could develop a survey for that purpose that would ask what brought you to town those kind of things so they didn't have that yet. but you're probably looking at Okay. We have we have another uh, round of this coming up too. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, just as a question here, are there any um, are there any of the applicants that we're talking about tonight that need that money before we look at the other ones? And we're going to do this again at the, at the meeting, second meeting in May. Well, they're the ones that met the deadline. Right. I don't think so we, what, I don't we do have money answer. left over. Well, yeah, what I'm asking is, if we decided that we wanted to table this and look at it all together with the other ones that we're going to do, um, would we be able to do that without um, without <coughs> anybody that needs money right well, away? I think we would have proceeded without hurting anybody anyway. Yeah, I mean, we've got the $90,000 left. And, yeah, I think that. But I think what he's saying, John, is to make sure that we did it right. Yeah, I, you know, if we did well, it, and I, I'm not so sure we did it wrong, but I just so instead of doing that, why don't you take out West Mountain, take out World Awareness, take out Chapman? We'll discuss those at our next meeting, and then the rest can proceed. Well, but we, I can't, haven't, we haven't got anything from Boone Festival other than just a request. All right, take out Boone Festival. Well, Boone Festival is working on something. They're very upset. Um, that the county had cut their budget by 40%. And they're a nonprofit that puts on an event that's enjoyed by everybody. And and they're scurrying to see, all right, now here's our budget. This is what it costs to put the Bloom Festival on. We've been cut, so now we have to cut the Bloom Festival experience, either that or go back to the county. So I know that they're not happy with what, what did they do we, for funding for the OPEX? I think they've always depended on public funding for the event. Maybe yeah. it's coming out of the wrong bucket. 
I ultimately think well, it's, it's a group as a promotion. And that's the bucket that the got cash comes from. I mean, yeah, but that's the problem. They have yet to be able to provide us with any data that says if they're promoting tourism versus people coming from Korea for the well, month for the day. Or, you ever ask them for it though? Well, every year we ask for all that data. It goes out as part of the application, and every year we don't get the information. We then, we, then we shouldn't give them the money. <laughs> Pretty much. I think I could go along with Tony's suggestion. We take some of them out and can, if, they're, if they're all right, then we do it in the next, in the next couple of weeks. How many applications do you have come in, John? No, no, I'm, I'm saying of the ones that we talked about at our last workshop. I'm going to make a suggestion you might like, you might not like it. I don't know. Well, I've shared them all with you. I just don't remember the amount. Was there like four or three? There's like three so far. Okay. So my suggestion would be, if, like Tony said, we pull those three or well, however many number of names there are that we want to pull, if we do, and have a workshop next week to make sure that these applications are in there and all the criteria is met, then at our next regular meeting we can approve them. That, that, I can't imagine that's going to hurt anybody. It just depends on whether we're going to have a workshop on this particular issue next Monday. Well, what's the weather or of the board? Whatever day. I, I don't know how to pick and choose because I don't know that there's some of them in here that. I mean, we went through them. Mm -hmm. We talked about them. We thought about them. You had them months prior in some cases, weeks prior in others. So we get down to a resolution in the night where we've talked about it, they do meet all the criteria. So, you know. No one's level. introduced it, so you don't need to table it. You could just pull it if you wanted to. Well, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying if, if they meet the criteria that we have, maybe we ought to look at changing the criteria for next year so that it's more stringent or we get data from the applicants. And if we don't get applications, we shouldn't give them the money. I don't, I don't necessarily agree, at least from my opinion, that they meet the criteria for the archives. Not all of them. Some of them do, some of them don't. You know, I don't, I don't know that the we agreed last week, though. Is, well, right well, now. they may be deserving. I don't know that they meet the requirements for archives. I, I, I don't think that the and county just them as an example. requires what be looking for either. I mean, the county is. That's what I was looking for in here, and I didn't see anything to that effect. Maybe just to be on the safe side, we should table it and talk about it in the workshop to make sure we're all in agreement with what the requirements are. Well, I think are. we did that last week, Doug, but I, I'm. Well, I, I mean, with the new questions the asked. What we believe to be the requirements. We went through each group and said yes or no. All right. And we're not always in well, you complete agreement. Familiar. This isn't the first year we've done it. We've had long discussions, oh, yeah, like you yes. pointed out. Yeah. We, I've always been, you know, we should get money. Um, well, I mean, you keep on saying hats and bats, but <clears throat> nowhere in here does it say hats and bats. No. That's what we're looking in order, for. <clears throat> in order to continue giving money out, I mean, we cool. really need to be able to. Provide more heads and beds so that we can continue to get revenue to do that. Does anybody think we're seriously in jeopardy of losing money if we do this resolution tonight? No, absolutely not. I don't know that anybody at the county is looking at it that way. Unless somebody. Well, I just want to make sure we're doing it right. I don't think the county gave money to the High Museum for an example. We always gave money to the Hyde and Chapman, but not necessarily, it wasn't always out of this yeah, occupancy tax. It used to be, before this was even around, we gave money to them from the general fund, I think. <coughs> 10, 12, 15 years like ago. Like I say, they are part of what promotes tourism. I'm not saying they're not, John. I'm, I don't have a problem with saying that they do promote tourism, but is that the only criteria? <laughs> I know, and I'm I'm fighting about it. Well, because there's some people that want to make up their own criteria that doesn't exist as far as what the yeah. county does. Well, I think the ones that we chose do meet the the discussion that we had last week. But I would feel a lot better if our next workshop we talk about we, will, we get there'll be more data from 
everybody that gets money, we get some sort of data to back up what we're doing here. That's my suggestion. You got to do in their board. Yeah, they're going off that right criteria right now. Then yank them off there. I don't have a problem with that. I think if they didn't. Table the whole thing until we get to the handle on what we're doing. Again, you don't have to table it. You can just pull the resolution not, we because no one's introduced, introduced it yet. Anything. Correct. Pull it into the next one. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, let's pull it. Okay. You, would you like the idea of having a workshop next week to get this done? I mean, I have a problem. It's not going to take that long. Well, we've got others coming before us. We've got a workshop on the 22nd. Dan yeah, doesn't get approved until next month. But I'm thinking if we did it next week, one quick night with this one list, we could approve it on the following Monday. You know what I'm saying, John? It's up to you guys. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I don't want to deny these people their money if they're justly <laughs> going to get it, but it looks like they want to pull it. So. We'll pull it. Okay. All right, so we're pulling it. Any other resolutions that you uh, wish to have hold or have a roll call vote on? Nope. Any other discussions on any of the other resolutions? All right. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve resolution 2.1 through 2.7 and 2.9 and 2.10? We've excluded 2.1. I will move. Move by uh, Councilman Brewer. I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Matterbeer. Roll call vote on those resolutions, please. Mr. Matterbeer. Yes. Mr. Clemens. Yes. Mr. Irish. Yes. Mr. Brewer. Yes. Mr. Stroud. Yes. Any correspondence? None. All right. Privilege of the floor. If you wish to talk to the town board about any town topic, um, please come forward. Have, well, raise your hand first and then come forward. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good evening, Paul Derby, 86 Ash Drive. I'm also president of Glen Lake Protective Association. I have about a three-minute statement for you. I'm here this evening because most Glen Laker, most Glen Lake residents are not happy. We're not happy because of Class A Marina, the first one on Glen Lake, was approved last week by the Queensbury Planning Board and earlier by the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Glen Lake Protective Association is also not happy because neither board took into consideration the wants of association members who voted on April 17th, 2017, with no dissenting votes, dissenting votes to oppose Class A marinas. Further, representatives of the Glen Lake Association were treated poorly by both boards. First, Mr. Underwood on the Zoning Board of Appeals scolded the association for not dealing with the docking and boating problems sooner and then he voted in favor of the dock variance of a mere three foot setback to the adjacent neighbor's property line. At the planning board, the association representative was not allowed to finish its prepared statement. And note that this was the only time the three minute rule was enforced that evening and after earlier public comments that were allowed to go on for well over three minutes. To make matters worse, this new 40 foot dock was allowed to be constructed three feet from the property line of the adjoining neighbor which puts two boats four feet or more into the neighbor's property. This did not and should not have happened. The Zoning Board of Appeals or the Planning Board could have made the applicants move the dock over to not interfere with the adjacent neighbors, and the Planning Board could have limited the boats to one side of the dock or limited the size of boats to less than 18 feet to avoid the Class A marina altogether. Or, as suggested as a remedy by the association, the Planning Board could have granted a temporary special use permit so this town board could have rewritten the zoning code to allow appropriate docks on Glen Lake. And finally, since I was not allowed to read the following 45 second statement at the planning board meeting, please allow me to do so now. On April 17th, 2017, the membership of the Glen Lake Protective Association voted to oppose Class A marinas of any type on Glen Lake. This vote supported the association's board's position on March 8th and identified six reasons for opposing Class A marinas. One, Glen Lake is not Lake George or Saratoga Lake. And we don't want it to become like those lakes. Two, we don't want commercial docks on Glen Lake, which Class A marinas are. And if we have any now, we don't want any more. Three, we don't want to encourage more boats and bigger boats on our already overcrowded, recreationally stressed lake. 
Four, we don't want to encourage second tier development on the already most intensely developed landscape in the town of Queensbury. Five, Class A marinas will decrease our property values and we don't want to decrease our property values. And six, allowing Class A marinas will have negative impacts on the lake's ecology and the lake community. The membership of the Glen Lake Protective Association dot does not understand why the town of Queensbury would allow Class A marinas or similar types of docks, boats, or development on Glen Lake. I just wanted to come and make that statement from Glen Lakers. Definitely. Not at this time. So Craig has come up to me and he says we need to discuss this marina situation. So it's down for our May twenty second workshop. Might have might have been a good thing to do before the expert. Yeah, we don't so, have to yeah. yeah. uh, which the <coughs> recommendation was made by the planning board to have this board discuss it, but you did miss one vital piece of information. The docks were there and they were taken out. The judge ordered they need to be put back in. So you're not adding to the use. You're correcting. I'm just what we're not. Because there's no other. We have what we should have done. You know, what we should have done. We borrowed the language from the Lake Shore Park Commission. What we didn't borrow, and nobody knows why we didn't borrow it, is the association dot exception to money which this would have been a little bit more convenient fit. Can they correct that after the fact, Sarah, if we do something like that? Uh, the, sure. This has already been approved? Yeah. Not by this board either, it's right. two other boards. Well, and, and that the was other thing, for the sake of the public, ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the PB, the Planning Board, are independent boards. We make the laws then they're supposed to generally follow them. There are variances to all laws, depending on the unique situations that come before them. But they are independent board. Right. So you don't know what to do. What we're <clears throat> bringing to our attention is that our law needs some work. Can I just correct a couple Thing. I, don't, I don't want to go back and forth on this. Let me just say a couple things. The deeds were never litigated to show they were or didn't, did or did not have rights there. There was an agreement between the parties for that. This is an expanded use. Four of the properties, two of those are vacant properties. Those 
they never had four boats there. There was never a 40-foot dock there since it was residential. So it was an expanded use, so there was some misrepresentation of the facts there. But that's really not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about Class A marinas on Glen Lake, and <clears throat> they really aren't appropriate for our lake. I think what the planning board should have done, as we asked them to do, was give them a temporary special use permit, which they could have done. You could have then dealt with the the laws, I think, and then uh, come back and do it in a way. Because then we'd have a voice, and it's a public comment on that. Paul, would you not discuss this at a workshop on the 22nd? And uh, if you'd be there, I'd appreciate that. So what, what is the workshop about? It's about many things. Okay. It's okay. It's Talking about association docs. Association docs. And then there's a, this is part of rewriting the code and the process. It would have to go through public hearing, et cetera. <clears throat> okay. Yep. I didn't see that. Just one final comment that it was, this is a commercial doc, however you look at it, and it's in a zoned waterfront residential. So we're just not happy about this. Thank you. John Salvador again. Um, as you review the occupancy tax issue, remember the state constitution trumps local law, county law, legislative law, regulations. The state constitution trumps them all. Okay. Um, with respect to your marina issue, um, yeah, it's the town code that is all makes it so difficult for everybody. The town board should recognize that the term class A marina, class B marina has application to Lake George only, only, is an invention of the Lake George Park Commission. It has not been established by the legislature. It is not a definition in the, in the Park Commission's Enabling Act. It, it was developed during the the preparation of the rec of the park commission's regulations at the very last minute okay it has no application to anything we have written a town code that encompasses all of this in the term a water body a water body in the town there are different kinds of water bodies the Hudson River and Lake George are navigable waterways of the United States and New York State. Glen Lake is not. Okay? So you can't you can't apply the same regulations to the to the the two different water bodies. They, it just doesn't apply. How do you say Glen Lake is not? Glen Lake is not classified as a navigable waterway of the state of New York. Okay? It may be navigable in fact, but it's not a navigable waterway of the state as Lake George is. Um, and the particular reason is the state does not hold title to the bed of Glen Lake in its sovereign capacity. That's very simple. Um, if we go back and look at the port committee um, activities, went on for years, um, you'll see it's all, it's all been pointed out. It's just nobody ever paid any attention to it. My recommendation to Marilyn Reba, to Chris Round, to uh, Stuart Baker was stay away from the Lake George Park Commission regulations. They have no application any place in town but to the lake. And it's only the Park Commission that has the authority, not the town. It took 10 years to get the town off the navigable waterways. You remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Sieper, Town Queensbury, Supervisor at Large. I wanted to talk to you today. We had a uh, very long, as John knows, committee day today, um, lasting till about 5.30 tonight. 
Uh, but what I wanted to bring up to you was that there was a report that was given today from uh, our OES, Office for Emergency Services, uh, proposal on a countywide EMS system. I've asked that they email out, and if you all would like a copy of that report, they said to just email and let them know you would like a physical copy. The report's actually very well done. We opted not to go out and pay for a consultant to write the report, but rather a group was put together here within Warren County to look at the problems that they perceive and why there is a need for a countywide EMS system. They have three different proposals uh, in that, and one of them includes Queensbury being involved. Other proposals have us not being involved and not um, opting into the countywide EMS system. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. They, the price tag ranges between a million dollars with eight full-time people to two fly cars with a 365, 24-7 response time. And uh, of course, those towns that opt not to participate in it wouldn't be charged for that. So there are three different proposals that are out there. And uh, I would think this is on everybody's radar screen, but I wanted to let you know, I did ask them to send you a link. They are gonna scan the entire report so you can read it. So any towns that opt out are not going to be taxed by the county? That's one of the proposals. It's one of the proposals that will depend on what is voted on. Another proposal that allows the towns to opt out, but they are being taxed for that? Uh, I believe that it's in the details. <laughs> was, was anybody included in this committee that actually worked for any of the EMS uh, squads in the town? Right. You know, they have been meeting on this. I, I don't know if you recall, I reported uh, on this uh, several months ago to you guys as a board to let you know that there were those discussions going on and your supervisors been very involved, I believe, in, in a lot of those discussions as well. I know Bill Vaness previously was, was working on it on behalf of the town. But uh, so, yes, I think they, they have involved all the different squads. Uh, and you'll find the report to be incredibly comprehensive. I think it's a good report. Uh, it's just, you know, what our taxpayers in Queensbury want. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's really where we're at and hoping to get that public input. They did ask to meet and try to vote on this proposal next week. We did ask that we have a little more time uh, to take a look at this, digest it, get it out to the town board, get it out to our, it will be on our Warren County website, uh, to our taxpayers, because we want to hear what they have to say about it, of course. We want you to vote on it at the county before the towns have an opportunity to see what's being recommended. And yeah, implement it. In or opt out. Correct. Well, I, they, if you recall, a few months ago, they, uh, I voted no. Every other uh, supervisor voted yes uh, for a certificate of need for the Warren for Warren County as a whole for the county to go ahead and apply for that. So that was kind of the first, and that was brought up without any notice. Uh, but it was something that was, you know, the majority of the board. Obviously, many of the small towns are having severe problems in terms of their response. So uh, while we don't suffer from the same type of unfortunate responses people do up north, um, so it's it's a pressing need and certainly one that they're seeing change uh, across the state of New York. But this group did do a nice job at three different proposals. But I am very interested to hear what the town board thinks of it and also what the residents of our community think of it, um, especially the different price tags that go along with it. So like I said, it is on the Warren County website. I hope by tomorrow morning. Uh, we just got it today. This is, um, you know, the copy of it. You can certainly ask for the, the paper copies if that's what you prefer, but you should have an email by tonight with it. What money are they talking well, about? What is it that you're, vote, you're going to be asked to vote on? The right, the proposal of whether or not. Or, no, I I think they'd like to select a proposal. So they want, and I'm guessing they want the town included. Obviously, they'd like us to subsidize. The well, the, uh, I think it's pretty much pay pay for if you use it is one of the issues. So if one of our squads can't get out, and one of the flag cars that are paid for, say we opt out, and they respond, then we would pay for that. And so where really what it speaks to is the billing ability of the different squads to be able to do that. I rarely have that problem, but I don't see an issue with that piece of it. Right. I personally, and I know that folks I've talked to in the last year that when you first started talking about this, didn't have any interest in right. being included on a countywide basis. But I mean, that proposal doesn't bother me. You, mm -hmm. you, know, you pay for it. You are out and they have to come down here for some reason, that's fine. But, you know, I, I don't yeah. think the town should be involved in a countywide right. program subsidize yeah. the up-county uh, towns that you know, mm -hmm. participate in this. I mean, the only reason I want the town of Queensbury in it is because we have the deepest pockets and we would wind up paying, you know, a big portion of the bill. So uh, I, I would never be thinking of it. 
Well, I do think, it, like I said, there is that option of opting out. Yeah, well, you are. You are. Yeah. I don't think that's the case, but thank you. Well, and, and perhaps Supervisor Straw, you have a lot more information, and I know you were at some of those meetings as well. So I just wanted to let you know this meeting, this, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. I'm sorry? I was at one meeting where you talked generically about what oh. we're going to do, and Bill and I were both at that meeting, and nothing, Yeah. no conclusions were made at the meeting, and I wasn't right. invited to any of the others. Okay, well, this report came out today, so I just... It came out today. I haven't seen it, but I do know okay. in their preface to the report, mm -hmm. they stated today that Queensbury and the city's not interested in part of this, and that's okay. I, I think maybe we heard different things, but I what I did hear is that they're looking for that feedback. And I think that's the crucial part and my my opportunity. I know I've gone past three minutes. I so appreciate the question and answer dialogue. And uh, just to get it out there and start hearing what our community thinks about it. And I don't know if everyone shares the same opinion of whether or not we have an issue, uh, but I do know I've taken a lot of time to talk to our different squad. Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I my time's up. Is yes. This a committee vote or is this a whole board vote? It would go through committee and then it would go to the full board. So I. This is what you're talking about, the committee. Correct. And I, you know, it could be very well, you know, we could have a couple months before that, but I know we did ask for additional time today. So. On the emergency services committee? Um, I, I can get you that list. I know that Ron Montessi chairs it. Uh, so it's the criminal justice committee. I know I sit on that. And uh, four Glens Falls uh, ward representatives sit on it. I believe uh, I just looked at it today. But. All right. Well, we'll get that information. We don't have to do it tonight. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else like to speak? George Winters, uh, 4 John Clinton Road. Uh, I, I'd just like to uh, say something about the fire whistle. Uh, we, they had a couple meetings and stuff on it, and the uh, papers wrote uh, quite a bit, but I, I think what all the neighbors and everybody else is missing is when they wanted to put the cell tower there, all these people didn't want it. And I'm telling you now, that is why the fire company is fighting that neighborhood. And I, I don't think any fire company in, in the town should be fighting the, the, their neighborhood like that. I, I did get I an agree. invite to meet with their, their officers and the membership this month when they have the next meeting to talk about it. So they're, they're not done talking about it, they're still talking about you know, some solutions that could occur there. I think what happened was everybody started um, believing that it was you know, either shut it off or leave it on. And that that proposal had, had been thrown out a long time ago. It was always, or at least in the last few months, it's always been about doing something like Bay Ridge is doing and some of the other like, fire departments are going where it blows once, it doesn't blow again for nine, ten minutes, whatever it is. And then if they have to blow it again, that gives them time to get to the, the building and let the dispatch know that they've got somebody there without constantly blowing that whistle because for them to get there within three to four minutes most of the time they do it but there's there's some a number of days when i hear that whistle go off at least twice because they, they didn't get there and call dispatch within four minutes or three minutes whatever it is so I'm, again i'm going to go down and talk to their membership and see if we can further that discussion along a little bit they were agreeable to it at one point and again, I think the issue with the post are getting involved and talking about it being shut it off and then everything you see on social media, social media is shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. That's not even part of the discussion at this point, it hasn't been for many years. It's, yeah, but, it's about trying to come up with a reasonable solution to blow the whistle. And, you know, the neighbors, for the most part, understand that it's not shutting off. Even the uh, Tara Rowland, who was one of the most vocal about it, it said, look, I, I'm perfectly willing to accept you know, this other solution, but you know, can we move along? So I think we just need to get back to that point where they don't feel like they're getting something shoved down their throat and the neighbors don't feel like they're being ignored. So I, I think we'll focus on that. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. And then I just wanted to comment on uh, the West Mountain Road. Uh, that They contracted that out, apparently. The county's not doing that. 
they're doing a nice job on West Mountain Road. And yeah. and then I, I want to say something to you, John, personally, you know. Uh, at the end of the meeting, you go on and you tell what you did at 930. And what I was going to do is get uh, some pillows for the guys. <laughs> no, so they could take a nap. And they, they act like that's what they want to do. You know, I, I understand you, John, you know. Uh, and I do believe, and I honestly believe, you do put a lot of time into it. But I, I don't think we need to have day by day, 9.30, I went and had tea with this guy, and uh, 8.30, I went to the... <laughs> oh, just tonight? Or, you know, we, we talk about campaigning, and I, I, I think this is part of that campaigning. So I just wanted to say that to you. And uh, thank you. Anybody else? Travis Whitehead. Um, I like to echo what George just said there, and I, I would appreciate it maybe if there was a little less uh, talking about what luncheons you had, et cetera. But, I'm actually going to ask tonight that you do spend a little time and talk about a meeting that we both attended uh, last week, the workshop. And I hope you will say that you were as shocked as I was to hear Kathy Bazzoni say that when she reviewed the records, the town records of the septic systems for the lakeside communities, that she found there were none for 70 to 80 percent of the properties. And that ones she did find were often a decade old or more and you know to me this seems very disconcerting um, particularly since I think we all know that uh, probably the most invasive species we have on the lake is humans and that once we put our waste into that lake it's going to cost us many many times the amount of money to get it out of there and to remediate the damages as it, it would have had to, to keep it out of there in the first place. So if we have systems that we don't know a whole lot about, it would seem that it would be a high priority to find out more about those systems. And I know we've spent an awful lot of money. Uh, maybe you think it's free money because it's coming from grants and such, but uh, there is no such thing as free money. And when you uh, hand out this money to Dave Decker and, and such, this is not taking necessarily care of your responsibilities to the lake. And that's our lake. It is uh, whether or not I own a property on the lake, I benefit from that lake. You benefit from that lake. We all benefit from that lake. It brings in a tremendous amount of uh, money and tourism, as we were talking about before, lowers all our taxes, makes our lives much, much nicer. And I'm hoping that, uh, and I did hear that you're going to give her initially $5,000 to continue that study. You know, I think that's the least we can do. And, but we do have people, we have you know, a million dollar plus payroll here. We have people uh, on the town. I don't know why over the last decades, you know, we, we haven't been documenting this stuff better uh, and why we haven't thought about it before this time to, to document it better. So if, if you would do spend a little time talking about that and I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Travis, I don't know that number that you threw out. Can you 70 to 80 percent, she said. That's not true because I yeah, think you just... She, said, she's, she said that. She misspoke, I think. Well, if she misspoke... I get it. About four years ago, we had brought in a gentleman who was a, a senior in high school who needed a project to do. He was a very talented musician that was down in Albany on a regular basis and his father contacted me and said, I need to find something for my son to do, but it can't be outside. He needs to be at a desk where he can sit down. So we came up with a plan where he documented all the septic systems on Lake George in the town of Queensbury. We gave him a database to George Hilton, who gave him every single home. And his job was to research, to find out what information we have on file for septic systems. And it was just simply where he could sit at his desk and he could go to the queensbury.net website, property locator, look to see when the septic alteration or permit was pulled, and he documented that. And I can provide that to you if you want it, public knowledge. And it was probably about 70% of all of the systems were documented. So I'm not saying 
they might be up to code, but at least we know when they were put in. Some were put in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, you know, 2010, but we have that information. And it was not the number that you talked about. So I'll get clarification from Kathy as to what she was referring to, because that, that number is not correct. And I okay. can provide you with that documentation to show, show otherwise. Well, that's fine. I mean, I was at that meeting, you were at that meeting. Everyone seemed to accept I I, that. I, I, understood her to say the list that she provided us of those names there was 70 to 80 percent that we didn't document but that wasn't the whole database that was just of that page that she put yeah and maybe i didn't understand it but i thought and i i went down through that page i'm like that's a new house that's a new house that's a new house so even when she was talking about it, i'm like there's something not right here because i can show you how many of these houses have been updated in the last three years or five years that we're on that list, I'm like, something's not right here. So, well, uh, and that might be another thing. When you do have documents like that handed out, uh, I wonder if there's a copy machine or something that's still available at night that perhaps you could get a copy machine for that room because yeah, there are a lot of times where we could use extra copies. Right. And everything's locked up. So, and when the public shows up, we usually are sitting there holding nothing. Um, so, you know, if you want that document I have oh, I would like I, to I would yes send it to you and you can at least take a look at it it was done well it gives you a good it was a working document to let us at least look to see what we have and unfortunately it hasn't been not, um, updated since so there may be newer systems on there that weren't updated but it, it was a good start and, and provided it to you know Carol Collins and the folks at Assembly Point Dunham's Bay um, Steve Seaboy or Rockhurst, so they all have that. Okay, well, it's good that we're further along. You would agree, though, that we need to have records so, of these. I, I think our next step, and you said in the meeting, is the step to transfer. I think that'll be huge. And, um, you know, in the meantime, until we get to there, we'll just keep have Kathy keep plugging away. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on the speak board? No, sir. Good evening. I'm Mark Westcott from Queensbury. I wasn't coming here to speak tonight, but I wanted to respond to uh, Mike Wilde's comments earlier today. Um, you know, I, I think it is important that we try to document what took place at these events that we're funding. And I know it's not easy. I ran a lot of events in my corporate life, and my boss has always asked me to document what sort of quantifiable results there were, and it's very hard to do. So I, I appreciate where you're coming from as a, as a council. It's not easy. I, I would suggest this. Uh, I, I would suggest that even though it's difficult to quantify, ask your, uh, uh, the people that you're funding to do it, uh, to do their best effort, to try to get a head count, try to understand how they got that head count. Uh, if they're distributing items like uh, coupons or something, you can get the uh, coupon count. Um, when people check in, ask them if they're from the region or not. They're staying at a hotel. A uh, very simple process when they check in. There's different ways of doing it. It may not necessarily be scientific, and it may not necessarily be statistically reliable, but it'll give you a sense of where these people are coming from. And you can at least have some sort of gauge to determine whether or not the funding is really reaching people outside of the area and bringing them in. And it's better than what you have now, which is nothing. So give it a, a good effort and put the onus on the people that are getting the money. Ask them to make it part of their uh, presentation. When they come in and ask for the money, ask them how they're going to quantify the results. Part of the problem, Mark, is they don't actually come in and ask. They don't, very few of them come in and do a presentation. Oh. YMCA always does a good job. Uh -huh. they, they can show that uh, the benefits of the town of Queens are very good to give them. Um, although I think that comes from uh, community funds. But most of the time, it's just they send in an application. Um, Doug Miller did come in. So he does an excellent job in being able to uh, give you the information that he's had from the past, how many nights he's got coming in for the future. but. For the most part, we just get a one-page application that you know fills in the blanks, and you know I think it's a hope and a prayer if they get the money great, or they 
if they don't, we hear about them being upset with us. So um, not allow them to come in and, and make a case for getting money. So I think it's up to you, Doug. I mean, if 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 you really are serious about wanting to know you know, who's coming to these events and whether or not they're really fulfilling the promise of what these occupancy tax dollars are for, which are to bring people in from outside of the community, hopefully staying at the hotels here and eating out at our restaurants and things like that, then the onus is on you to change the rules. You can ask them to add to the application a section on how they're going to quantify the results of the event. And, um, you know, they have limited resources and it's not always going to be perfect. But the thing is, is you got to try. Otherwise, you have no idea. And you're just going to keep having these discussions and people are going to continue to criticize you for dollars that are spent. It's doable and uh, it, it doesn't have to be very expensive and it doesn't have to be very trying. It just needs to be agreed upon and, and a discipline that's added into the process. All right, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Supervisor. Anything else like to talk to the board about town topic? Hal Bain, Ward 1, Queensbury. Is there a reason when these organizations are coming to you for the money that they don't come in and make a presentation? Is it time constraints or, you know, what is the reason that that, that doesn't happen. I, if I'm looking for $8,500 or so, I think I'm going to go in and meet with the people that are that are going to be giving me that money, and you know, say, hey, you know, this this is this is why we want that. This is what we do. We do with that. So, are, our applications that we get year after year, they've been getting money for many years, <clears throat> and I think they just send the same application year after year, mm. hopefully that we fund it every year. There are different ones that do come in, right. um, new applications, I guess, but a lot of them are, for many years they've gotten money from the town. This is just a different source of where we get it from. But does that make it right, just I'm because, just because we gave them the money in the past? I mean, I, I think I'd be asking, you know, for more information, and especially as Doug has mentioned and, and other people have mentioned tonight, is, you know, if we're giving you this money, then when the event is over or whatever it happens to be is how many people did attend to this i mean you know maybe maybe get together as a board and maybe you make a sheet up and give it to all these organizations and say here if you want this money from us this is this is what you have to do these are the requirements on this so they have the requirements they just have the requirements we, we have a, an application that we have to fill out which is somewhat new what i'm thinking is we should Send a letter to all these guys saying, even if we fund you this year, this is what we expect next. Mm -hmm. You need to provide us with data. So this year, when they have that event, they can collect the data, and the next year they can say, based on 217 points, 2017 numbers, this is what we brought in. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this it's been an evolution. I think it's better than it was. It's still not there. Well, and what we do next year is. What we can do is ask TBA to be here, ask all the requesters to give a presentation to the board and to the public on why they are deserving of the OCTAX money, what they're going to do with it, so forth. So all this becomes more public. I, I think we can do that. That's, that's a great idea, John. I, I agree with that. Um, so what if, if you get 80% of those people that come and make the presentation to the board on there, and you get 20% that don't, are, are you still going to give them that 20% of, the, of that money? We don't right. give it to them now if they don't fill out an application. But I, I'm saying if they, if they, if you're going to, if this is, we can talk about, right. You know, I think it's unfair to come up with a fair decision tonight. It's a little oh, no. question. And we right. will, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Sure. And we'll try and make it better. Yeah, I, I'm not asking for a decision tonight. I'm just, I think what I'm asking for is, and, in, in, you know, as some even mentioned, is more oversight of where this this money is going. And because somebody takes this piece of paper and sends it in and says, I want, geez, I want $10,000. Give me 10000 last year. Give me, give me 10000 again this year. Well, you know, I think we better, you know, maybe take a, a lot. A, a, I think that's fair moving forward, although we, we this board, 
in the three years we've been here, three and a half, we have made it stricter. We have, you know, asked for more information than previously. So we've made the advance, and I think we can do better, as well as, you know, inspired by your suggestion, we can do things better, such as having public <coughs> and insisting that presenters come and so forth. We can talk about that. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else in the public like to talk to the board about town issues? None. Town uh, board discussion. Well, let's start with Tony. Just nothing tonight, thank you. Tony. How do you feel, man? Uh, what everybody knows that finally you have reciprocated a birthday present for me <laughs> since I gave you years of, years a while ago. And I want to thank you very much, Jen. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Diane. And, uh, and don't forget the card. The card. Oh, my present. Should I read the card? No. <laughs> no, but, and I hope you use that as I've used no, my Buffalo Bills uh, item that you gave me. But I often think that was one of my mistakes in life. <laughs> oh, only kidding. I remain true and blue even though it gets sour sometimes. Uh, Okay. Uh, I have just three things. Two of them are fairly quick. One of them I'll apologize, George. It's going to take me a little while to get through it, but I'll get there. So, uh, and it's not a campaign event, so just so you know. Um, first, I want to thank the uh, North Queensbury Fire Department for uh, inviting my wife and I to their, their banquet. Uh, Tony and uh, his wife and Dave Dool and his wife were also there. Um, great group of guys. Um, always enjoy going up and, and uh, spending time with the uh, firemen and EMS will get a chance to do that. So I want to thank those guys that put on a great event again this year. Um, and uh, I wish them Godspeed and, and all the things that they do and thank them for their service. Um, secondly, I'm sure everybody is, anybody that's been on Facebook uh, has seen, I hope, uh, Mike McGrath's video about the uh, the bags because they're landing in everybody's driveways and on their lawns and on the side of the road from the post hour. Um, yeah, I, I figured somebody would talk about it tonight. So, I, Karen, I don't know if it's anything that the town can do with the post are, but isn't there something that we can do about them just throwing stuff out on people's lawns? They're not subscriptions. They're just throwing these things out. They're basically littering the entire town with them. Uh, and their comment to the a question was, well, we didn't know that they weren't being delivered to the door. All you have to do is drive down any street in Queensbury and you can see they're not being delivered to anybody's door. Um, I guess we could send a letter to the post star asking them to what is either... It, what is it? Um, it supply it's, or some sort? It's or? the same information apparently that's on their, um, their public website or their, their, you can get it on their online version. It's not new news. It's already been out there. I don't know why they're doing what they're doing, but is there anything that we can do to stop them from... I mean, you could. Littering. <laughs> I know that you could reach out to them and ask them as a courtesy to stop that, but I don't think that they would be under, you know, they would have to follow that without any sort of well, law I, I, regulation. I know that the people that I'm, I'm hearing from are people from the town, yeah. not just the town board, it's people from the town. And they're not happy with what the post are doing. So. And in, in, in this, you know, in July and August, when they. You got the yellow pages on the yes. flowers in the front yard. Mm -hmm. That's I know. not acceptable either. Well, I am. Especially the yellow pages. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. uh, I don't know. If it's, could you just send a yes, message kind of letter to them and tell them there's a concern about this information? Is that? Yeah. Oh, I, there already sounds like an email. An email communication. Yeah. When did that go? <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being all over that. All right. The, the last thing I have is probably going to be a little bit uh, long-winded here and may cause some hard feelings on you know, some of the board members up here, but unfortunately that happens. Um, I've been on this board now twice. Uh, this time, uh, this is my fourth year uh, on the board, so uh, I tend to think that I got fairly thick skin and, and I can put up with a lot of things that people 
say to me, say about me, um, and things that uh, they've read or that I didn't know about, I find out about afterwards. So, mm. the last three years, um, we started looking into some uh, things that were going on with the grants that the town was responsible for uh, as part of the Watershed Coalition. Um, we started looking into it, I want to say January, February 14, when we first got on the board. John Salvador came up to the town at uh, one of our meetings and asked about money, I believe, at the time was owed to the county, not necessarily the town, but there was an amount that was owed to the county. We started looking into that, um, and it started a chain of events that uh, eventually wound up with Dave Decker being arrested um, for allegedly committing fraud. And uh, during that three-year period, um, a lot of information has come out through the investigation. And uh, last week, um, maybe it was two weeks ago now, I had an email exchange with, with Supervisor Strau about an audit that the state did on the um, activities of the Watershed Coalition, the town of Queensbury, the towns of Lake George were involved as well as Fulton Landing, um, about a state audit that was uh, provided to the town. And John's response was that he never saw an audit. Um, that response was after uh, he claimed that I was the chairman of the Republican Party and I was being political. I sent my email to him and copied uh, Investigator Conine on it, who was part of the investigation of the Dave Decker case, um, about where this audit was. As one of the folks that was interviewed by the Sheriff's Department, they asked me if I'd seen a copy of it, and I hadn't. Um, the town board has never been advised that this audit existed. And after about six back and forths with the supervisor, all denying that he's ever seen the audit in question um, from the Department of State. Um, interestingly enough, they subpoenaed all of our emails back to 2003, I think, or 2001. And reading through some of those emails, there's a lot of interesting information about what the folks involved in the Watershed Coalition do and when they do it. Uh, and there's a lot of information that the town board should have been made aware of and has never been made aware of. Uh, the town clerk does not have the documents that she should have as uh, uh, the town board uh, exercising their fiduciary uh, responsibilities to the town, as well as our archive responsibilities. So, uh, the town clerk is responsible for all the records in the town, um, both for any auditing purposes uh, and just as a record keeper for the town, she's had no information about this. Uh, I've got uh, the meeting minutes from the executive committee for the Lake George Watershed Coalition from 1-14-16, which is January this year. And last year. Uh, last year, January mm -hmm. last year. Uh, and now keep in mind that the email that went back and forth between John and I copied the entire board on it, as well as the clerk, I think the uh, uh, accounting office and the sheriff's office was just this month, so uh, over a year and the difference. They were going to they were going to review the response from municipal officials of Lake George, town of Queensbury, and Bolton Landing to the Department of State regarding the audit auction or audit action follow up. Uh, and then Supervisor Strau requested a meeting with the secretary and Deputy Secretary Sandy Allen. Um, I tell you this because I'm frustrated with the fact that the town board is continually kept in the dark about anything going on in the town. We never know about what's going on until the last minute or unless John decides to tell us at the end of the meeting when he does his uh, minute by minute uh, uh, regurgitation of his calendar. So there's plenty of documentation here. And John, I know that you continue to say that you don't have the audit. So I've, I've taken the opportunity to print a copy for you along with your response that has your signature on it that responds to the audit itself. And the reason I'm so concerned with this is this audit is very critical of the town of Queensbury's handling of um, the information that we're supposed to have with relation to these contracts. Millions and millions of dollars have gone through these grants, gone through Dave Decker's hands. The town board is ultimately responsible for it because we're the contractor for it. And these uh, reports or this audit from the state is very critical of uh, the town of Queensbury not exercising their due diligence and fiduciary responsibility on behalf of the taxpayers. So I'm a little bit upset with the fact that 
John continues to deny that he ever saw this report while his signature is on the response back to them. And he was talking about how to respond back in January of 2016. Had it not been for Travis Whitehead filing a complaint with the sheriff about the activities of Dave Decker and the grants that the town was responsible for, this would have been all swept under the rug because John and Dave Decker did a very good job of dancing around all the questions that we asked over the last three years. They had me baffled, they had me buffaloed. I knew we didn't have the information we needed, but it sounded plausible. If it weren't for Travis, and him going to the sheriff's department and then starting an investigation, the alleged crime that Dave Decker committed could very well have gotten swept right under the rug. And I just don't understand, John, why you would let that happen. <coughs> oh, I've got a response. Doug. I'm sure you do. So I do. If anybody would like a copy of the audit uh, or the emails going back and forth, I'd be more than happy to provide I'm them. I'm happy to share them. Oh, you'll share them now, but you haven't had them for the last three weeks. Doug, I got a good response. Yeah, I believe it. You won't be happy about it. Yeah, I'm sure. You're going to be a criminal with crooks. You said Well, at least I'm not going to be complicit in what Dave Decker has been doing for the last 14 years, John, that you've been in that coalition. So yeah. it's election year, Doug. Well, I, I know. We'll hear your, your campaign events here in a few minutes when you Are get you, going to uh, the calendar. Anything else, Doug? I'm done. Thank okay. you. Cam? I. No, I don't have anything. I, I've got an issue, but I, I'm going to take it up with the, the... It's in a subdivision, and I'm not even sure what... And I can't remember the name of the road, but the town called this developer about garbage and et cetera out in the front yard to clean it up. Well, he cleaned it up and picked it all up and put it in the backyard. <laughs> One of the neighbors called me today. So I, I, I just got to look into it a little bit further before I tell you about it. And that old drive? No, 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 no. It wasn't that one. It was... Uh, over on Sherman Avenue. It's the only thing I got to right. worry about. Okay. Well, first of all, before I do my report to the community, um, uh, I am putting together a report, but first of all, I uh, would just like to highlight <coughs> that Doug Irish said I never shared. It, it wasn't an audit. It was an audit under construction by the Department of State. We have not to date received the final version of the audit. Doug refers to a 133-page audit. We have not had that. So what Doug refers to... John, you're... you're I didn't you're, interrupt you. I know, but you're, okay. you're, you're lying to them again. No, I you're the one that has a problem with... page audit. Lieutenant Stockdale sent you Doug, a note saying it was Doug, not, it was Doug, a seven page. You might John, you're lying, mind your to, bad, you're lying you to the You are the biggest liar I've ever you're seen. You're lying to the community. You know again, what? Man. You never let God, the facts in the way of a good story. The now second let line me. Of, the second line hey. of the state's, state's uh, report to you says audit findings, John. It says audit findings. That's the state. The state's letter to you, not me. Okay. I didn't write that. All right, Doug. All right. The 133 pages I did not was, was my you, Doug. mistake. I know, but I can't let you go without your, Doug, I let you go with your lies right, and right. your political being because you're the chairman of the Queensbury Republican I am. Committee. That's, that's not a You're lie. representing Rachel Sieber. I'm not. Her all husband, right. Let, Kevin let's Kennedy, stop that stuff. Go ahead with your reply. Investigation. You're all related. Here is what the cover letter says. Um. Please return the report within three weeks of this letter, with the town's comments included. DOS will review all comments received, complete the DOS response section, and issue a final report. That's what the cover letter says that it's referring to. We never got the final report. I did submit. You, know you conveniently leave out the audit report and only call it a report. It, Doug. It is a audit under construction. I don't see that in here. It is in there. Doug. It says. I, I just don't understand how you, Doug, why you want are to Are you going to interrupt me all night long? You know, John, it doesn't really matter what it is. Doug. Because you'll continue to make up your own story as we go along here. And I'm going to share this with the newspaper. And there is what it said. Again, before he shares it Doug, with Tom Ford, will you share with the newspaper. Be polite. Is that something you can do? Not with you, Jim. No, I know. No. 
it says it will issue the final report. All right. So I have here a letter to Dave Dacker dated November 25th, 2014, in reference to the contract numbers, in reference to the audit, in reference to the grants that he's talking to, and guess what? CC the town board. Wow, everybody saw that, Doug, including you. Now, I have another one, dated July 15th, 2014, and it talks about the Department of State and their issues and everything else, and I talk about the issues and everything else, and guess what? The town board was CC'd on this. Doug, I guess you're on the town board, right? So you were part of that. And I expressed all these issues with the Lake George Watershed Coalition, with Dave Decker, with the Department of State, many times with the town board, in many ways with the town board, to the point where they understood the problem. And that's why we assigned Kathy Bazonia. But let me back up a little bit. Not only was this board aware of everything, and Mr. Irish likes to pretend that I didn't tell him, that's not true. I've got documents to prove it wasn't true. Now, I realized the problem, and I was proactive. I said to the Department of State that I'm not really comfortable with the grants with the Lake George Watershed Coalition. I realize I'm new, okay, because this grant thing has been going on since 2001. At the time, we're talking about 2014 and 15. I'm still, at that time, trying to get my handle on what's going on. I wasn't comfortable with it. So I said to the Department of State, trying to be proactive, I said, why can't we have our own administrator of the grants? Why can't we take part of that grant and hire our own administrator and pay them out of the grant money? Well, they said no, but then they came back and they said yes. It's a good idea, and we're going to give you that. We're going to give you 15% of the grant up to $50,000 that you can use for grant administration. Okay, good. And the whole board knew where I was going. So I said to the board, I said, you know, we're not comfortable with Dave Decker and what he's doing, so I would like to hire Kathy Bazoni and have her administrate the grants that we take on moving forward. Because they all understood the situation was less than healthy. And so for, me, for Doug to say that I didn't share this information with him is completely false. It's certainly less than honest. And it's very political. Uh, you know, and I am writing up a moment-by-moment -moment response to Doug's accusations, which again are very political. One of my concerns is, Doug, <clears throat> is you knew about a 133-page document mm -hmm. that this board, and I talked to Ron Conover, he knew nothing about it. I, I sent an email to John Wimbush in the Department of State he says offhand, I don't know anything about it, but I'll look into it. Nobody knew anything about it except, except um, Warren County Sheriff's Department. They knew something about it. So I asked you like four times, you seem to know about this document. We don't know about this document. What was your source? No reply. What was your source? No reply. Doug, you still haven't told me where you got the document from. Here's another. No reply. How many times did I ask? I've got the emails right here. And and and, um, and here's the subpoenas. The subpoenas did not ask for this document. This document, I was not required to present a document that was under construction to the clerk's office for records because it was under construction. And like they say in the letter, we will issue the final report. I never got a copy of the final report. Okay? Now this this can go on, Doug. You're obviously political. 
and you're less than I. I don't know why you think it's political, John. If well anybody, done. If anybody not Are you in the chair of the Republican? I am, absolutely. Am. Yeah, there you go. And you're sitting in this chair. It's so you way. have to make decisions what is best for the community or what's best for Doug and his political party. I think, what's best for I the think you're making decisions based on what's better for Doug and his political party. Transparent in our. Doug, our I've got the documents to show you that you saw, you were exposed to what was going on. And I will email those. John, people. I wanted this. I wanted this document that you you referred to about six times that you had never seen. That no, gives no. The findings no, of the God. state. What you said is a say, 133 page document. Department that of state I never found saw. That the town failed to sufficiently I still manage and oversee the contracts no. under review. That's right. not true. That say the town neglected stop, the Tim. I understand that you're upset about it, but Jesus, the I'm town well. neglected that to do their fiduciary duties by allowing a subcontractor. It goes on and on and on like that, for five pages Fine. about how we didn't do our job. And the, I'll, ask, I'll ask anybody else. Anybody else see this document before tonight, or before I emailed it out? No, no, I was confused when you were referring to 133. And, and, and that was clarified, right. John. So I again, I tell you that John is trying to mislead you because. It was clarified to John that the 133-page document that I saw included all of the invoices and documents and documentation, documentation that the sheriff's office had from the state and that the audit was only seven pages. So he knew that before he tried to mislead you into saying, Doug Irish is looking for a 133-page document. That was corrected. He knew it was corrected. Steve, Do Steve Stockdale even went on to, to tell him that he was the one that was being less than sincere and less than honest and uh, paraphrasing, and that's not exactly what he said, because John accused me of being, you know, he was off on a tangent about being corrupt, or, uh, political, uh, a liar, and everything else. I'll stand by that. This guy is the most, yeah. he's the biggest snake I ever met in my life, okay? Yeah. I, and no. I, I'm sorry, there's just no other if way. If this was an election year, you wouldn't be I would, John. This, I would, John, because I'm, I'm probably one of the most Listen, conservative Listen, I'll share documents. When you share documents. Money. We'll let the public decide. I just okay. want to know what you're getting out you of. You knew about this. That's you're making up a story. You're manufacturing I, I just a want to know why you're because protecting you're trying to get Decker. political edge out of it. I think you're having a hard time distinguishing your political job from and your not, town board job. And you're not new at this because you're on, your emails go back to when you were a third board councilman referring to work at the Warren County Watershed Coalition. So you've been aware of everything that's been going on there since you were a town councilman. No, okay? I wasn't aware. When I first came into office You can't claim ignorance, John, when you signed oh, the paperwork. Oh, uh, we should stop you know being on. so political. Okay? It's quite obvious. Okay. All right. I'm going to get on to my report. We'll let the public decide. I've got all the documents here. I've referred to the facts that you knew about this. Yeah, okay. And you're pretending, oh, no, I didn't know anything about it. It's not true. All right. The seventh annual Benefits for Ben, Friday, May 12th, 5 p.m., 88 Red Street, Glens Falls. Tickets twenty dollars. It's a very good effort. I want to thank the Osborns for all that they do for the community. You can do something for the community too by attending the seventh annual Baskets for Ben. A uh, fire hydrant flushing is going on. If your water's discolored, keep in mind we're flushing the hydrant. Just be aware of that as we go forward. We did email the post star. We did express our concern as many residents have called my office and said, how can we allow these? They're in and around mailboxes. They're on the streets. They're all over the place. Uh, they're really crashing up the place. Could we do something about it? Well, we're looking into that. Um, we have a thank you to the town board and especially to Tim Brewer from the Warren County Historical Society. They really appreciate our generous office offer of furniture and will help a lot in their new facility, but they wanted to thank Tim for their $1 donation to make that happen. <laughs> um, my report to the community. Um, on Tuesday, April 18th, I met with a capital financial group 
and they came up with lots of good news about our insurance plan going forward. I'm having Capital Financial come to our workshop on May 22nd to explain to the board uh, the good news. Uh, Thursday, April 20th, um, the town board and town clerk are interested in improving our management of our town records. We wish to be compliant with the New York State Archives requirements and assure that our records are safe and secure. We met with stored tech representatives, Alan Van Tassel and Morgan Lane, to discuss infrastructure upgrades. Options discussed. One, use Microsoft's network of remote servers, in other words, a cloud. Or two, we could buy or lease servers and our server space. So we're looking into our options to try and make sure our records are secure as we move forward. Um, several emails with Councilman Doug Irie. She was making claims I did not share in New York State DOS. This is all Thursday, April 20th. I replied that I had not been aware of that document. I even wrote an email to New York State DOS at John Wimbush asking about the document. He had not familiar with the document either. There was a document even though we thought it was under construction. I emailed Aaron Frankfeld asking if there's an update with the traffic signalization design on the Aviation Road school entrances. And uh, he just got back into town, so I'll call him tomorrow and give that update. Friday, April 22nd, I was a presenter at the North Country Climate Rea Real Reality Conference at Green Mountain College. My topic of discussion was local community action to address climate change now and in the future. On April 22nd, a Saturday, I helped host the New York State Archaeological Association of Fort William Henry. Uh, Monday the 24th, I chaired the Legislative and Rules Committee. We discussed single-use plastic bags and their harmful effects on the environment, and we discussed what we could do and what we should do. Uh, the county board will be seeking public opinion on this matter, and you may offer the public opinion at the county's Board of Supervisors June 14th evening meeting. We also, Monday, April 24th, had a town board workshop, and Kathy Bazzoni, um, we, sp we talked about potential projects for Kathy Bazzoni. One of them being a Lake George data collection, which uh, Travis White had brought up, and trying to get a, um, a data collection for all the uh, residences around Lake George so we can find out who has what. And we also approved her to seek grants that might fund the next stage of planning for the Rockhurst Septic Stormwater uh, start of Salt Abatement Program. We discussed the town's proposed property transfer law that Tony's been working very hard on. We discussed manufactured homes law. And uh, one of the things about the manufactured homes law is uh, manufactured homes should be allowed into all residences if they fit in with the character of the neighborhood. So we have a problem with defining the character of the neighborhood. And um, we allocated funding requests for OCTAX and community funds. On Tuesday, I had an EDC board meeting, uh, followed up on some items the town board had asked me to follow up on. Wednesday, I did a Portuguese site visit. Portuguese family have, a, uh, have a couple, several lots along the Hudson River. We have a road that we've never used. It was a dedicated road. We've used part of it, part of it we didn't use. So the trucks need to turn around, the highway trucks need to turn around. So we did a site visit. We think we worked out a, uh, a plan that would be satisfactory to all. I had a comprehensive emergency uh, management plan meeting and we're going forward. We're gonna do a tabletop uh, emergency plan and work out some of our plans and see if they would work or see if they need tweaking. I also had a community action agency board meeting and a Warren County Safety Quality Bicycle Organization board meeting that Wednesday. Thursday, April 27th, I met with Perma's Ed Starwitz, and I've got good information to share with the board on that at the next workshop and a SUNY Board of Trustees meeting. 
Friday, I had a uh, had Ronnie gave me council meeting specifically to talk about biosalage treatment, where we are and where we need to go. Um, we also had another cloud discussion with Stored Tech, but this time we have the town managers present at that, <coughs> so they're aware of what we're thinking of doing, and uh, questions were taken, answers were given. And then I went to SUNY Adirondack Academic Awards meeting. On Saturday, I did the Climate March, organized by the Tri-County New York Transition Team. And uh, I I'm just looking at the audience while I'm asleep now. Yeah. I spoke at the event of the need to protect our environment for our future generations. And I went to the Glens Falls Collaborative Wing Fest, which was well attended. I went to the NAAC banquet, the 50th anniversary and college assistance award scala. And that's why I couldn't make the North Queensbury thing. And I had Tony represent me there. Uh, it was a great event. Guest speaker, uh, Darcel Denise Clark, who was the Bronx district attorney. She was very good. And then today, I had county meetings, real property tax services, tourism facilities, and tonight's town board meeting. So that's my report to the community. I did try and make it a little bit shorter for you. So, given that, I, uh, anything else for the good of the order? I just like to mention that uh, the uh, pickup dates for wards. Oh yeah, they started today in Ward Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, um, residents should look at the um, Queensbury.net. That um, times and, and dates for all of those are on are right on our webpage. There's several people call me, so I looked it up and sent me. All right, thank you, Brian. Anything else to do in the order? Mm -hmm. All right, motion to adjourn. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Look TV and Joel Barlow and uh, our sponsors, especially Stored Tech. Thank you, Caroline, Kara. Thank you, members of the public, for attending. Now, motion <coughs> to adjourn. You got move by Brian, second Seven. by Tim. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're now adjourned. This program is underwritten by the generous support of Stored Tech. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. The firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.